Hello everybody, well uh, Tapio's just sailed around the Peche Lighthouse and uh, making his way up to Marina Rubicon, uh, looking really cool. So, um, and behind him, way in the distance, about five miles down is, or maybe four miles down, is uh, Gregor McGookin. So, um, we're going to be very busy as things are happening. So, other side, Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I forgot about you being there. <laughs> Lionel's taken over the helm, so all looking good. And uh, that's the other one. Hello! Okay, I need another card. Okay, whoops a daisy. Everything going on at once. So, uh, looking good. Welcome to the Canaries! <laughs> so, holy dooly. Look. Okay, we're on the leeward side. She looks, she looks uh, low in the water from this angle. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh. Nice sailing conditions though. We've got 25. <laughs> yeah, looking good. Looking good. Your hands good? Your hands. Hands okay? Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's some hull wave there. That's very impressive. So, Okay, let's see if we can get that in there. Rightio, so Tapio's making good speed in this. Um, all coming offshore, so it's pretty calm now. And uh, he'll make his way up towards the buoy. So uh, he got his water generator out of the water. Uh, wind vane sort of disconnected at the moment while he's hand steering. And it's probably about a good two miles to the, uh, to the buoy. A good two miles there. So I'm going to swap this over now. Jane can hang on to that one. Take this one, Mike. Okay. Um, all right. Now I've got a bit of water on the lens here.
show will give you a bit of a rundown. Certainly, uh, whoop, the breeze is uh, catching the camera here. Never short of wind, shortage of wind in this part of the world. That's for sure. And, um, yeah, the Gear 36, I think most people watching this will know all about the boat, Tapio. You've probably been following bits of it before, but this is a um, late 60s boat and completely rebuilt by uh, Tapio in a very short period of time and only just made the start in time. The Gear 36, uh, the forerunner to the uh, Norta Swan 36, uh, which uh, sparks from the Stevens design, very slick in the water. Uh, not, a, not a big boat, very small. Reminds me a lot of an SNS 34 um, in, in a lot of ways. And so very low in the water. She's still a bit heavy obviously because she's carrying a year's worth of supplies for uh, Tapio to get around the world and um, uh, that'll slowly get lighter as time goes by but it's not going to be a dry boat that's one thing for sure um, on paper it's particularly fast and at the moment uh, now running in sixth place i think it is um, oh, you can see a bit of water sloshing around already so yeah there'll be a lot of time spent down below on this boat <laughs> Tapio sporting a, a cut on his hand which shouldn't look too bad it was a minor one but he wanted to make sure that uh, it didn't get infected as he goes further south because it'll get a lot warmer uh, until they get over the equator and on the other side so, anyway that's probably just a bit of a highlight and we'll uh, we'll shut this down now and uh, we'll come back on in about uh, well, probably 20 minutes or so just as he's about to uh, go around the boy and um, we'll be able to talk to him and uh, have a good chat, find out what he's up to, how he's feeling, how the boat's going, all those sorts of things, but certainly uh, fantastic sailing at the moment. Flat water, I think you'd be relishing this lot. Uh, in here, flat water, nice breeze. But you can see the very low freeboard uh, compared to uh, all the other boats. And fantastic sailing. So we'll follow the image a little bit longer. It looks pretty impressive to me. <laughs> If you're a sailor, you're probably enjoying this. That's plenty of breeze there. <laughs> Tapio's smiling and waving. He knows he's got a bit much up, but what the heck, it's pretty calm in here. So he's just enjoying as much as um, we are watching it. Tapio's being an individual, gone for fluoro yellow safety patch on deck and up in the sails as well. Everyone else has gone orange or red. No, no, you're going, you're going over to that. To, yeah, go for the low, go for the lowest pimple on the hills there, the first little hill. Okay, just aim for that and the boys out there, we'll go forward to the boy in a minute and show you. Okay, yeah, but just hold up, don't, don't come down. A lot of people on uh, comments are saying, how come we're giving them navigational assistance? Well, the reality is that uh, these guys are not sailing under sailing instructions. They're sailing under collision regulations only. They're mariners at sea, and they can accept any sort of assistance, like verbal and guidance and so on. They can't have any weather routing. That's banned. But anything else is uh, just the same as any sailor at sea. So they can call up ships and ask for positions and use that to work out where they are. Um, ask navigation advice, uh, anything you like. It's it's free game. It's not like normal yacht racing. So, um, you know, we'll preempt some of the comments. Everyone's a bit unsure about what they can and can't do. But it's the same as it was in the 60s uh, in the first Golden Globe. Um, and when Robin uh, made his uh, trip into New Zealand to uh, in Dunedin to try and get some messages across, you know, he, he was speaking to fishermen and so on. Uh, same for Matessia when he went into Tassie and. Uh, and then Robin also, when he went into Melbourne, he uh, called the pilot boat over and uh, passed over messages and so on. So this whole idea of these uh, film drop gates is to replicate the same thing that all those entrants did because they had no other way of getting messages out. And by having one consistent uh, spot where they all have to come, then it makes it fair game for an event like this where you're all trying to be uh, the first one home. So not like normal yacht racing, that's for sure. This is a real adventure and uh, real sailors at sea in real boats one-on-one, -on -one, uh, whether it's Susie or whether it's a guy or whatever. Uh, it's very simple and, and a very human challenge.
flying the flag proudly for Finland on the back. Okay, so Philippe got through at about 10 o'clock yesterday. He sailed tra straight past that lighthouse. He didn't understand which, he didn't identify that lighthouse and went way down to the next island. Had to come back. Yeah, so he lost about four hours. <laughs> and yeah, and then it was Mark Slats a uh, couple of hours later. And then Jean-Luc came through at about, uh, about one o'clock. And Susie came through this morning about six o'clock. Uh, Uku about two hours later. Yeah, so, uh, and, and Igor's coming around the other coast. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> hey, you got your best shirt on. You've got your best shirt on. Your best shirt. You've got your good clothes on. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can't hear me. Too much wind noise. <laughs> he's looking, he's just come out of the shower and... Uh... No, no, no. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. So you can see it's not a big boat, it's just one bunk down in there on the port side and storage on the starboard side and a little cuddy down there as well. Uh, so very impressive. Here, Neil, you have to be on the windward side. I haven't taken a shower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, you wouldn't have heard that. He said he hadn't taken a shower today. Had to, we should be on the other side, he said. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going to shut this down now and uh, uh, I'll give it to Jane Jane. Don't, don't right. tap your ass. Uh, yes, I'll hold exactly where you're going. It's half a mile off the coast. and go and head up to the boy, eh? So we'll catch you again in about uh, 15 minutes. Thanks a lot.